What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Seriously Fast Media. My name is Tom Ludemoser. First off, I want to thank everybody for their support with the channel. I want to thank you guys all for your subscriptions, for the likes, for the comments. Keep some comments rolling. I've been getting more and more comments in the comment section uh, as of late, and I really, really enjoy it. So thank you, guys. I truly do appreciate that. I like, uh, you know, communicating with you, having conversations about what's going on in the videos. Make sure if you don't like what I talk about in the videos, don't hit the down the thumbs down button. If you like the content, hit the thumbs up. But if you don't, uh, you know, like what is being talked about, leave it in the comments section. That really hurts the channel when it comes to growing um, because we're so small. You know, if I had 50,000 likes, uh, you know, a, a few thumbs downs aren't really going to hurt. But when I have so few, as of now, it does. So I do appreciate that, guys. Nonetheless, I appreciate the fact you guys are communicating one way or the other. Thanks. So today I want to talk to you about my five big 2022 way too early predictions. Uh, some of these are way far-fetched. Some of them, eh, maybe not quite so much. So nonetheless, stick around, watch the video, and let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Also... Let me know what you guys think may happen in 2022, whether it be about the topics we're uh, going to talk about here or something that maybe you thought of that maybe I didn't. If it's a big one, if it's a good one, I might even throw it in the next video. Thanks, guys. So my big first one is Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski is in a contract year. Uh, Brad is going to be, um, you know, this is the first time he's signed a one-year contract for in quite some time. Uh, Brad Kozlowski, obviously, he is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. He has accomplished a lot of things in this sport that vast majority of other drivers never have and never will. But what Brad is lacking as of late is the hyper-consistency. 2020 was, whether it be to put on a show to ensure that he has a ride this year, or whether it was just him proving to himself that he can still go out there and still be bad Brad from Rochester Hills, Michigan, about an hour that way, not even an hour that way from me. Um, you know, Brad is, you know, he, he lost Miller Lite, which, you know, that's not a huge loss because uh, Molson Coors came on board with uh, Keystone. So instead of Miller, you just see Keystone. I don't know if the money is the same. I don't know, you know, how all that support's going to work out for him. But nonetheless, um, you know, he stated years ago when he shut down BKR, Brad Kozlowski Racing in the truck. He stated years ago when he shut down Brad Kozlowski Racing in the truck series that he wanted to concentrate on another championship. He wanted to concentrate on going out and being hyper competitive and eventually create BKR up at the very top maybe he wants to go here he wants to go compete for a championship in the NASCAR Cup Series you know whether that is still what he's searching for or not you know he's been not had been very vocal about that at all um why you know is it Roger Penske that signed him for a one-year contract because that's all he really wants nowadays or is that Brad saying hey I need one more good year but so that I can formulate going into the next gen car, Brad Keselowski Racing. I see 2022 the potential for Brad Keselowski Racing to return, but this time in the NASCAR Cup Series. Um, you know, with the addition of 2311, it gives hope. You know, these driver owners coming back into the sport the way they used to way back in the day, um, whether they be part owners or not to push it forward. Brad has multiple ventures on the side. He ran Brad Kozlowski Racing, the truck series team, you know, to numerous wins, very competitive team. Let's go out there and move on. Um, kind of feeding into that, here's my pick number two. Matt DiBenedetto is not going to Wood Brothers Racing in 2022. It is official. Austin Sindrick will be taking over the Wood Brothers 21 car in 2022 with the next gen car. It's not a surprise. It's not. It shouldn't surprise any of you. Even Ford's come out and said it. I mean, everybody in the team has said it's going to happen. It is not a surprise. It's not a question. It's not an assumption. Nothing like that. But where does he go? Does he remain competitive, as competitive this year as he was earlier in last year? 
uh, or kind of a little bit better later in the year? Does he get better this year? Do they have a little better program this year to offer him? And I guess we're just going to have to see. But what happens to him next year? I think he goes to that two car. I think that he has shown that he's a fan favorite. He has shown that he can sell merchandise. He has shown that he can be more competitive when given the opportunity. Last year, about halfway through the year, that team faltered. I mean, they looked strong going into the playoffs. And then once they were in the playoffs, they kind of choked out. Um, you know, very early and exit to the playoffs, which is unfortunate. I like Matt. Matt Benedetto is definitely a cool dude. He is a good driver. Put him in some Penske equipment, some tier one Penske equipment. I think he can surprise you. Um, here is my kind of prediction number three. So this year, um, Denny Hamlin has offer pad on his race car. Uh, that is the first non-FedEx sponsored race car he's going to have in a long, 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 long time. What does that mean? Does that mean FedEx is stepping down? Or does that just mean, hey, FedEx, we want to put one more out there, you know, and maybe show that Joe Gibbs is trying to pull in. What does that mean? I don't know. Um, I think going into the next couple of years, especially closing in on Hamlin's retirement or possible retirement from full-time, I think Denny Hamlin loses uh, FedEx as a full sponsor for the entire year. He's one of the very few drivers left out there that has full-time sponsorship from one sponsor. Um, I mean, not even two-time champion Kyle Busch has that. And, you know, that's wonderful that all these guys can get all these big-name sponsors, but it seems like those days are kind of going away. Jeff Gordon was sponsored by DuPont his entire career. Uh, Exalta bought out, you know, became the, the brand of DuPont. So Exalta was on the race car. But you still had car brands like Panasonic on his car. Uh, the Drive to End Hunger with AARP. He did not have one full-time sponsor his entire career. He was, and he had a much longer career. So, well, I guess we're just going to have to see. But I see FedEx kind of cutting down, whether it's four or five races, half a season. We'll just have to wait to find out. Now, this one is kind of a little different. This one here is a stretch. I have a friend of mine who has a friend who stated that they are working with a race team or have worked with a race team. They work with Chevrolet, but they work with a certain race team, uh, a race team that is storied with Chevrolet. Their iconic driver ran the black Chevrolet Lumina, the black Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Um, RCR has run Chevrolets forever. I mean, I've been around, I've been, I was born in 1992. They've been around at least 10 years before that with Chevrolets. So why would RCR even consider leaving Chevrolet? Well, look at it. Chevy sponsors, or not sponsors, but supports these race teams, and they show tremendous support to one race team, out of mo all of them, and that is Hendrick Motorsports. They've always shown favoritism since Hendrick has kind of pulled up. Um, does that necessarily Chevrolet's fault? No, of course. you got to support your big key teams. You don't want to be going around saying, hey, look, we've got uh, Doherty Racing, and you know they haven't won a race since 2014. These are our guys. You can't really do that. They do support their teams. They do a good job. But you can't just run around screaming, this is our team, this is our team, when that team is 20 to 15 uh, or worse. You know, I'm glad Chevrolet continues to be the winningest, uh, you know, manufacturer in NASCAR. I'm glad that they continue to push their support for NASCAR. But it's one of those things where Chevy's kind of fallen off of some of their other teams. Now, with this new ECR engine package, with Chevrolet concentrating on one engine, one engine builder for their teams, much like Toyota does and Ford does with Yates, um, you know, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. Last year, RCR showed some serious speed. They showed some serious strength. Um, Austin Dillon moved into the round of eight from the playoffs. He won a race where he outran some of the best in the business to do it. Um, so much for being a silver spoon kid, huh, guys? Um, you know, they showed some speed, but does that necessarily mean that RCR is feeling the love? Maybe, maybe not. 
Where do they go? Kind of from what I'm hearing on rumors, and these are backwater rumors, so don't hold me to it. It's just an interesting aspect, and that's why I wanted to share it. RCR may go to Toyota. I've heard Toyota wants to go from being, you know, just the one main team and two small teams to maybe a couple more race teams out there like they did before. Um, and it would be great to have some powerhouse teams with a few cars in them. And, you know, kind of what is hinting at that, you know, Ty went to uh, Ty went to Toyota this year. He went to TRD. He's going to be running uh, several races for Joe Gibbs Racing in their uh, Xfinity program. He was trying to run the... Daytona 500 for the Gaunt brothers had a fantastic outing, arguably the best performance that race team's ever, ever seen. But, uh, and you know, and you see a Ty also getting some of the support that he's gotten from grandpa. Um, you know, whether it be himself or grandpa doing the work, I don't know. I don't know exactly how it works over there, but you see Ty with, <clears throat> excuse me, the same supporters that you see on Austin's car, Bass Pro Shops and Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, going into these two, these few races here uh, this year, does that come from Gramps saying, hey, look, I'm going to support you no matter what? Or does that say come from Gramps saying, hey, look, Toyota, I've got some support. Let's have a conversation. I don't know. Kill me. Bit mad at me. Whatever you want for saying that. But I, I think there is a glimmer um, on you know, on what happens there. There's a glimmer of possibility. Last but not least, this is my fifth big prediction, and this one is not so bold. This one kind of, it's happened before. La a couple of years back, Toyota released the brand new super aggressive Camry, and when they released it to the public, they released it in NASCAR Cup Series form. Uh, they released a Toyota-wrapped Cup Series car. Obviously, no sponsors, no numbers, nothing like that to showcase their new, boldly designed Toyota Camry. Uh, I thought that was really cool that they did that, and they released that <clears throat> before they released the actual road car, what you and me can drive. Um, I foresee Ford doing that as well with the next-gen Mustang. It's no rumor Ford wants to come out with this new Mustang in 2022. The current generation is, I think it's been around since 2014, if I'm not mistaken, in different variations and updates, but... Uh, and typically when that happens, these race teams try to pull in another big, or sorry, these manufacturers try to pull in another big team. Um, so Ford, does Ford bring in another big race team or maybe a big name or an idea behind a race team? I could see it um, with the next gen Mustang coming out with the new gen, next gen car. Um, does Ford bring, like I said in the first, Brad Kozlowski racing onto the fold? Is that their showpiece car is that the car that they show hey look we're back we're back we're better than ever and we're going to go out and we're going to be hyper competitive with this next gen car and by the way say hi to brad or maybe even rcr i don't know let me know what you guys think in the comment section below those are my big picks thanks for watching if you watched all the way to the end i'm glad i could hold your attention with the picks um you guys have a great rest of your day and the daytona 500 is tomorrow good luck to your drivers